Hi, I'm Melissa Chavez, and I'm here at Open Source Bridge 2011. And today, I'm speaking with Professor Bart Massey, uh, computer science professor at Portland State University. And uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about what you've been speaking about at the conference. Well, the talk, I did two talks for this conference. Uh, the first talk was with um, a couple of colleagues of mine, Selena Deckelman and uh, Jonathan Leto, and was a talk that we've given several times on trolling and on the. Uh, the idea that people can come into your community with the intent to disrupt it. And uh, we talked about how they do that. We talked about what you can do about it. It's a light talk, and we had a lot of fun with it. Um, it's tricky sometimes to do a light talk at night in the morning, but I think we pulled it off. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, and how did you get involved with open source? Well, I. I've been doing what you'd probably call open source since there were fancy names for it. I grew up in the microcomputer world in the 70s and you know, had my first job programming computers when I was a junior high age. Um, and so you know, I was really fortunate when I came to Portland um, for the first time 25 years ago to get at Reed College access to a computer running 2.9 BSD Unix and you know actually get to sort of build some of this infrastructure when it was fresh when it was new and so I just stayed in touch as you know as free software and open source developed and got names I was lucky enough to be there for a lot of the key events and you know get to watch them and have fun with them so um, I got involved with the development of the X window system early on because a close friend of mine, Keith Packard, ended up writing today. Probably he's got two thirds of the code in X is probably his. And so, you know, it was really nice to get that very first hand view of that as it came up. Um, I got to uh, work in GNU software, work inside GCC and GDB when those were new things. It's just been really a series of really nice opportunities. And I think, you know, being in Portland and in Oregon has been a key to, you know, getting a lot of those chances. It's been really, really fun. Um, uh, how do you get more people involved? And I guess talk a little bit about once they do get involved, uh, the trolling aspect. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other talk I gave today uh, actually was a talk based on a Lewis Carroll piece from the late 1800s called A uh, Tangled Tale. And it's, it was a story, it was a thing that he ran as a serial, trying to get people engaged in problem solving through um, storytelling, through telling story problems and having people have solutions. I think, you know, getting people involved is a really multifaceted thing. As a professor at Portland State for the last 10 years, I've had the opportunity to teach classes in open source. I was really one of the first people in the nation teaching open source coursework real solidly, and I think I still do it a little differently than everybody else. I'm fortunate enough this time around to have uh, 40 students this summer in my open source class. Uh, as a as technologist in residence at the uh, Oregon Tech Business Center, I've had the opportunity to play with a lot of open technology startups, learn a little bit about the business side of you know technology development and open source, and that's been a really great privilege. Um, I think they're a terrific organization. Um, as a uh, citizen of the community, I mean, obviously, one of the ways to get involved is to contribute, and I've tried to do that. I've tried to help and encourage other people to do it. I, I build a lot. A lot of what I try to build is actually infrastructure for other people to build on, because I think that's really important. Um, I've tried to help with documentation. I've been involved. PSU has been a Google Summer of Code mentoring organization since that was founded, and. Uh, have had the privilege of have, helping a number of students through that, and recently I was involved along with uh, a bunch of other Portlanders, uh, a mostly Portland contingent, in writing the uh, mentor manual and the student manual for um, Google's Summer of Code. Um, so, you know, a range of activities, I guess. Um, because Google's been so generous with its funding, um, with me in particular, I've had the opportunity through that to fund on a small scale, a lot of open tech activity, and particularly in Portland. Um, and so I've tried to make sure that there's venues through Portland State, that there's funding through this pool of money to make sure that things that look promising can happen. And I, I hope I've had you know, at least a small contribution through all that to sort of moving things forward. Um, yeah. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about 
your involvement with Open Source Bridge from the beginning. Well, yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, I always one of the things that university professors do um, is take credit. I'm, 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 a, I'm the faculty advisor of the Portland State Aerospace Society. We build uh, really the world's most advanced ultra low cost uh, rockets, and. Uh, that's all open source, all open hardware, open source stuff. And uh, I like to tell people that what I do with the organization is I help them find money once in a while, try to keep them from hurting themselves, and take credit for whatever it is they do. Um, and here, you know, Open Source Bridge to some extent comes out of a conversation I've had with several groups inside Portland um, around the vision that one of the things that makes Portland unique, one of the things that makes us special, is that we have not just the largest concentration of open source developers I know of anywhere in the world, but the broadest. Um, we have everything from the top of the web stack all the way down to Linux kernel, embedded programming, open hardware people. And I th thought and think that a conference that tries to get all those people in the same room and talking to each other is a really, really important thing. And so to some extent we tried to do that when I was involved in the conversation around the uh, Linux Plumbers Conference and helped with set the first one of those up. And we really succeeded there, I think, in getting some groups in the same room that hadn't been so much in the same room before. People like the X-Window System folks and the audio folks and uh, the Linux kernel folks and so forth. But I wanted to do something even broader than that. So when the opportunity came through the diligent work of other people, to put together some kind of a conference, some kind of an event in Portland um, in the summer that was you know, going to be a, maybe a more broad-based thing. I really pushed hard to have it include not just the web um, lamp at the time, stack, stack kind of people, but to try to go all the way down this stack. And I think that one of the things we've been really successful at with Open Source Bridge has been precisely that you know, the range of people in this room having a conversation is just as large as any conference, you know, it's much larger actually than any op of the many open source conferences I attend every year. Um, and at the same time, I was able to provide again through the generosity of Google a little bit of financial help in getting Open Source Bridge going. Uh, I feel very, very blessed because my management and time management skills are so poor that there's a group of people in the Portland area who are really amazing organizers and managers and planners who really have done all the heavy lifting of getting this thing up and keeping it working. But I like to think there's a couple of times every so often when I've been able to step in and provide some help that is of a different kind than, you know, maybe they can get other places. Okay. Um, and what other things are you passionate about? Well, <laughs> I hope I've given you a long list already. <laughs> In my spare time, I build rockets and uh, I play music. I, I'm, I'm actually a very, very enthusiastic, if not very skilled, amateur musician. I've played keyboards for a long time. I really, well, my family, obviously, is going to be an obvious passion answer. My boy is 12 years old now, and uh, he and my wife are, you know, the joys of my life. I... Uh, I, uh, you know, find so much to do with my time, and I find so many things interesting that really the problem isn't having patience, the problem is figuring out which ones I can afford to nurse on any given day. <laughs> um, I, uh, and that's part of why I really try to surround myself, right, with a community of people like this. I can live vicariously through my students, through the open source community. I can get a lot of the things I want, you know, through others and really share their joy. And, you know, if I had to do any a thousandth of this myself, it would, you know, it would be hopeless. Cool. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you. It was great to talk to you. You too.